Father, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the power in your word. Lord, because we know that your word is yea and amen. We know that your word is life. We know that your word is power. Lord, we know that your word is God. Father, we thank you for the living world that we are looking at today. Let it have divine effect in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, speak through us and speak to us. Let no one sleep while hearing the word. Let there be no itching ears. Let the spirit of buying and selling be subdued. Let every form of distraction die. As many that are here to learn and to hear the word, Father, bless them and give them a word. And Lord, as many that are here even for a word in season, do what no man can do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Last week we began a topic titled Understanding Divine Destiny. And then we asked ourselves, what is destiny? We define the fact that destiny has to do with the end goal or what God has in mind when he created you. And we saw that in Jeremiah 1.5, he was telling Jeremiah that before he formed Jeremiah, before he formed Jeremiah in the belly, he knew him. And before Jeremiah came out of the womb, he sanctified him and ordained him a prophet. Meaning that before we are born, God already knew what we will be or what will become of our future. It is already written down. And then we are also made to know that there is a divine plan and purpose for everyone. God has a divine plan and purpose for every individual. Now, if that individual is outside God's purpose, outside God's will, or outside God's divine plan for them, we also were taught that it is not to start blaming God. Because the Bible says that while men slept, Matthew 13, 25, while men slept, the enemy came to so towns. Because the original plan of God is that everything be good. And that's why we're told in Genesis that after he had created the heavens and the earth, he looked at everything. And he said, everything is good. So child of God, you are a creation of God. What it means is that you are good. What it means is that you are good. What it means is that God created you to be good. God created you as good. What that means is that you are not imperfect. And so if you see any form of imperfection, Know that it is not God, because every good gift cometh from God. Every good gift cometh from God. Every good gift cometh from God. And God looked and saw that whatever He created was beautiful. But when men slept, the enemy came to sow tiles. I pray for you today. Whatever tiles, whatever the enemy has come to sow in your life, while you were sleeping. Whether physical sleep or spiritual sleep, I ask that the Almighty tonight will approach it from your life and your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Beloved, in Jeremiah 29, 11, the Bible says that God said that I know the thoughts that I have towards you. Say the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. So if you are going through one issue or the other, and you find out that expected end has eluded you, or what you plan, what you propose. Some of us, when we're growing up, people look at us and say, oh, this is an engineer. Oh, this one is a lawyer. And at the end of the day, you find yourself growing up and none of those things came to pass. Where you have zeal and interest, none of them came to pass. May the Lord help us and forgive us in Jesus' name. We said we're going to look at why destinies are ruined or what are the causes for somebody's life not to follow after the pattern of 
Jeremiah 29 11 for it not to follow after the pattern of Genesis 1 31 when God had finished creating and he said all was good for it not to have followed the pattern of Jeremiah 1 5 what could be the cause and today we are going to identify if time will permit us six salient facts and I want you to please pinch yourself it may be a nine program but it's not a room to sleep off what is more important here is that you learn and hear the secrets of what will take you to your next level if you hear any prophetic word and you don't have the base to keep it how would the word benefit you now we usually treat this topic every year in the ministry so if you are joining us for the first time in this our 10 years of ministry then you are privileged i welcome you to tighten and fasten your seat belt and listen to what god has in mind for you after this series your destiny will indeed change after this series your situation will not be like before again after this series if your life has been going topsy top way taking a downward path god is going to bring you to the right path and set your foot on the path to follow in the mighty name of jesus beloved one of the causes why our destinies are ruined or why we don't walk in line with god's will and purpose for our life is this it could be our roots our roots could be our culture it could be the the culture we believe in in the place the society the customs from our foundation some of us have occultic foundation some of us have marine foundation some of us have spiritism as foundation so when the root is bad it provides a bedrock for the devil to breathe in or to have access into a man's destiny you cannot expect one whose grandfathers were worshippers of shongo or orumila and the one whose grandfathers were sincere christians believers to have the same kind of future it is not possible it is not possible it is only the mercy of god that can change the difference can make the difference the next thing that can destroy a destiny is idolatry in this part of the world in africa our cultures our lifestyle our growing up our parents they are fond of worshiping graven image and idolatry has a large role to play in destroying the destiny of man most of our backgrounds are deep in idolatry the black man or the the the, the, the native man knows to worship any god he could put up a stone and call it his god he could carve an image and call it his god whenever man comes from a place where the true god is not worshipped then you will know that backwardness is prevalent in that place there is a nation that any place you go to you see them worshiping different kind of idols i won't want to mention them and they have several gods they have several gods i don't know maybe 399 gods who know that they worship and if you look at them their population is large but they are backward and they have been existing for a very long time so when your background is idolatrous then it will bring bridge you know the individual to inherit a divine cause and idolatry is one of the worst sins against god god does not like it god does not like it at all if you look at deuteronomy chapter 7 maybe from let's look at verse 25 to 26 god said that the graven image of their god shall be born with fire it does not like graven image so he said wherever you see them burn them with fire say so thou shall not desire the silver or the gold that is on them neither will you take it unto thee lest thou be ensnared therein 
for it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Neither shall thou bring an abomination into thy house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it. But thou shalt utterly detest it. Thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. Anything idolatry is cursed. God does not want, does not like, would not stand any form of graven image. When the children of Israel waited for Moses, and they thought that Moses was not forthcoming, all the jewelries that they were supposed to use to enrich themselves as salaries from the Egyptians, they used it to do what? To do a, a, a calf, a golden calf. God was so angry that they were destroyed along with their calf. So when you involve yourself in idolatry, you bring yourself and possibly all the people around you under a curse. You will want to rise, but something will surely pull you down. Why? Because you are operating under a curse. Idolatry or occultism, they are very terrible. They are very terrible things and God does not like them. And they can ruin the destiny of men. They can ruin the destiny of a nation or they can ruin the destiny of a community. I hear some people say, since I was born, I have not been to Africa. Since I was born, I don't even know where my father's uh, village is from. My father doesn't know where, uh, all that one is grammar. As long as it's your root, it surely does have an effect on you, except you stand with the blood of Jesus to cancel it. And I pray for somebody hearing me, listening to the sound of my voice, that every form of idolatry that your grandfather, your great-grandfather have been involved in, you are exempted by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. So it is deep. It is potent. God does not like it, and it has effect. And that's why in Psalm 97, verse 7, God says, shame will come on those who carry graven image and worship them. In Psalm 16, verse 4, God says their sorrow will be multiplied. And in Isaiah 45, verse 16, he said that they will be put to shame. They will be confounded. All those who go after other idols, he does not like it. And in Hosea chapter 9, if you read verse 10 to 14, you will find that God says that they will be like grapes in the wilderness. You know, it's, it, 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 when you get to the end of it, from verse 14, he said, I saw Tyros is planted in a pleasant place, but Ephraim shall bring forth his children to the murderer. Give them, O oh Lord, what would that give? Give them a miscarrying womb and a dry breast. What the Bible is saying, a miscarrying womb cannot retain anything. A dry breast cannot nurture anything. So what the Bible is saying in Hosea chapter 9 verse 14 is that anyone who goes after uh, idols, what the Yoruba calls Ashedanu, that means, um, it means that it means that that individual will not be able to um, do anything worth the while. It will be like a case of a basket, somebody fetching water into a basket. The Bible says that all those who serve graven image shall be put to shame. They shall become confused. They will begin to group in broad daylight as if they are in darkness. And what this implies is that they will not be able to find their bearing in life and they will have no future. Idolatry can ruin an individual or a nation. And hear me, child of God. Idolatry is not only when you carry and carve idols and put in one room and bow to them. Your money, you can idolize your money. You can idolize your wife. You can idolize your husband or you idolize your children unknowingly. Some people cannot even play with their money. God has no say in their money, meaning that their money has become a God to them. In this day where we talk about Yahoo Yahoo, where people use their parents to turn to money or do all forms of occultism, they have idolized money. You kill somebody because of money, you have idolized money. You backstab somebody because of money, money has become your idol. 
Even if as a pastor, you respect only those who give you money, then you have made money, your idol. You have made money, your idol. God is against it. God does not want anything. Some people, gold, jewelry, they are their idols. God is against it. Idolatry of any form, whatever you owe there, some people, they are like Jonah. Their own form of idolatry is their sleep. They cannot play with their sleep. Once it's their sleep time, they cannot give it for prayer or for anything. They have idolized sleep. God will help us and take away every form of idolatry from our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. The third thing that can make the destiny of a man to be ruined is when a man willfully disobeys God. When a person struggles against the will of the Lord, the will of the Holy Spirit, you know that this is what God wants you to do. You know that this is what is right, but you struggle against it. When you struggle against the perfect will of God for your life, if you don't know it, it's a different thing. But if you know it, then you will be willfully destroying yourself. Whether it's in career, whether it's in ministry, whether it's in marriage, whatever level in life, whether it's in academics, you know what is the will of God for your life and you struggle against it then you will be using your own hand to destroy God's purpose for your life. I pray for you that it will not be too late. Because Saul was the first king of Israel, but he lost his royal destiny because of sin. We full sin. We full disobedience. When Samuel said to Saul, said, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded you. For now, would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel? In First Samuel chapter 13, if you read from 13 to 14, you will find out that God's intention for King Saul was to give him the throne of Israel forever, from generation to generation. But because he has not kept the word of the Lord, the throne was taken away from him. He lost it. And so his children could not rule forever. Why? Because of willful disobedience. He missed the purpose of God for his life. Beloved, is there anything you are involved in? Is there any sin? Is there any act that you are involved in? And you know that it's against the will of God. It's against the purpose of God. You know that God has warned you concerning it. But you are adamant and willingly and willfully doing what you want to do, giving yourself excuse. As God asks you to have somebody for a life partner and you refused, or as God said you should go to a particular city to go and preach and you are still there giving God your own time. Before it went off. I was telling us that when a man willfully disobeys God, that man like Saul will be shortchanging his destiny. And I was telling us that you could disobey God in the area of marriage. You could disobey God in the area of maybe your career. You could disobey God even in the area of your ministry. You could disobey God when God is saying, do this, and you are saying, I don't want to do. I was saying that, is it that God has asked you to go and preach in a particular place or a town, and you are giving God excuses? Willful disobedience caused Saul his throne. I pray that for you, you will not willfully disobey him in the mighty name of Jesus. And if there is any way that you are willfully disobeying him, the God of heaven would meet you. The God of heaven will help you. The God of heaven will take away that very act of disobedience and he will take you to the right path in the name of Jesus. Why do you disobey God? Hear me. When God makes a demand from you, 
It is a privilege. Some people, God tell them, oh, buy this for this pastor, buy this for this church, sow this seed. And you start rationalizing it on your own. You start telling God on your own, or you start giving reasons why. He who gave you the command, he knows the reason. When God makes a demand from you, hear me, it is a privilege. Try your possible best to make sure you obey God. When a man struggles against the known will of God, you know that this is the will of God, you will be unwittingly destroying your own destiny. I pray that tonight, none of us will struggle against God's perfect will for our life in the name of Jesus. Another way, the fourth way that a man's life and a man's destiny can be truncated is through the influence of witchcraft. Especially those of us in Africa, though we know that the Igbo people too have witches, oh, but people from idolatrous and polygamous settings, they usually suffer from witchcraft attack. Where a man marries more than two or three wives, and then jealousy becomes the order of the day. And when the children of one wife is doing well, sometimes you may, you may not even know that some of these things have to, things to play. Wife A may be very intelligent in mathematics, and her brain may be, may, whether she's educated or not, may be tilted towards the sciences. And wife B may even be carrying baskets. So quickly, we just have two more reasons to go on. I said the influence of witchcraft is another thing that can make uh, one to have this issue of your destiny not being fulfilled. When there's witchcraft in the house, definitely things will not go well. And that was what happened in the case of Ea and his wicked wife, Jezebel. Queen Jezebel was very anything, word, any word you can use, no word short of witchcraft. Because in First King chapter 19, verse 1 to 8, is a long one. If you look at it, you will see that the witchcraft of this woman made a man who had in chapter 18, of first king killed several prophets of Baal, 300 to be precise. Killed all of them. You know, he committed what you call a lawful homicide. Then all of a sudden, he's now afraid of one woman. One woman, he started running helter skelter. He started running up and down. When there is witchcraft in somebody's foundation, whether you like it or not, whether you are involved directly or not, if God, one does not ask for forgiveness properly, that witchcraft has the ability to cripple the destiny of people or children born under that, that reign. Witchcraft is a form of oppression. It is a, a satanic enchantment. And it has the ability to make their victims become depressed, fearful, prayerless, mentally disorientated. They could be discouraged. And then they could be death seeking like a prophet Elijah. When witchcraft is at play, a man may not fully fulfill his ministry if it does not take time, if God does not help him. And that was what happened to Elijah. He was so afraid. He left for heaven before his right time because he was tired. He was already telling God, take me away, take me away, let me go. Let me go. Lord, let me go. This, this witchcraft is, uh, I, I'm not better than my father's. If you look at his account in First Kings chapter 19, you understand what happened to him though god helped him in spite of the the help of god elijah still went away earlier than he was supposed to witchcraft can frustrate a man's destiny witchcraft can change a man's glory witchcraft can stop a man or a woman 
from fulfilling their destiny. It is not what to be made light of or to be toyed with. Pray against it. Because the Bible says, do not suffer a wish to live. Another thing that can make one not to fulfill their destiny, please, I will ask you all these things, is sin. Sin, sin, I think sin is even the number one. one. Sin is, in any form or in any way that it comes, it definitely destroys a man's destiny. Whether it is the sin of fornication, adultery, immorality, or whatever name you call it, but the one that is most deadly is the type that Joseph ran away from. The sin that you will sin against your own body. But in these modern times, we so-called believers don't care. You get up, you fornicate, you sleep, you do whatever you want to do. Forgetting the fact that it is sin before God. We don't have any form of fear. No fear for God. No fear for our maker. No fear for God. And so, whatever it is that sin gives birth to would definitely hinder a man. Whatever it is that sin gives birth to would definitely hinder a man. I pray that we will not be injured in the mighty name of Jesus. From enjoying my destiny and those things that we have mentioned, Father, take them away from my life. My foundation is not clean. Lord, wash my foundation with your blood. My ancestors have practiced idolatry, and I may have practiced one form of idolatry or the other. Beloved, pray to God. Ask God for forgiveness. The blood is very potent. The blood of Jesus was shed for the remission of our sins. God says he does not like idolatry, and those who are involved in it will be put to shame. And the third thing we said was that when you willfully disobey God, when a person willfully disobey God, the person will struggle with God's agenda for their life and will not fulfill their destiny if they're not careful. And we looked at the story of Samuel and Saul. When Saul did what he did, disobeyed God, took all the fat, fat rams, spared the king of Amalek, and he did not kill them in battle as God has instructed him to. And the kingdom was taken away from him. So, beloved, look at your life and talk to God. Father, what is it that I have done or that my forefathers have done that have brought me to this level of entering from one problem to the other that has left me at this level of poverty? Father, what is it, the influence of witchcraft in the polygamy in my father's house? Oh, Lord, please save me. Save me from the likes of Jezebel. Save me, oh, God, from the likes of the fathers of Ahab. Lord, Help me, O oh God, take away witchcraft. Witchcraft, I told you, can hinder a man from fulfilling their destiny. And Lord, help me. Number five, that kind of sin that made Reuben to receive a curse instead of a blessing. Father, let me not be involved in it. Help me, O oh God. Talk to the Lord this day. Talk to him this morning. Talk to him this morning. Talk to him. Say, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. Whatever has been delaying my destiny, let it go. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. Have mercy on me. Beloved, I need you to pray. I need you to pray. I need you to call upon the Lord, just like Jabez called upon him. Call upon the God of our salvation, just like Jabez called upon him. Say, Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Lord, visit my foundation. Have mercy on me. Cause me to discover my destiny. Let my destiny change for good. Kela gadu shalabaze. Elebron do ye de bori. Kanda la gadu sakanda. I pray the prayer of faith today. Lord, locate me, O God. Lord, locate me, O God. My destiny must change. Lord, change my story. Change my story. Bless me indeed. Enlarge my course. Lord, bless me, O God. Bless me like you bless Jabesh. Give me, O oh God, dominion over lack. 
Give me dominion over poverty. Give me dominion over want. Ordain me to be a carrier of your divine blessing so that men will see me and they will see your good works in me and they will praise me. Kalabashira baje. Legede brondo yedebo. Yibala gadu shalabaza. Legede mboko to yibala. Yende yedebo ribala gadu. Tezende yedebo ribala katase. Yela gadu shalabaze. Mandari gadaba zunda yadaba. Lembra gada de de regede bozu. Nigra da zanda yadaba ze. Londo yekete yiba katayaba. Lord have mercy on me. Abba Father have mercy on me. Lord have mercy on me. Abba Father have mercy on me. Legra da zunda yadaba. Suta zanda yadaba ze. Elegen de rikata yadaba. Den de rekete yende yedebo. Yiga da gadu sada yaba. Oh Lord, have mercy on me. Change my story for good. Change my story for good. Forgive my foundation. Forgive my foundation. Forgive my foundation. Restore my glory. Restore my glory. Restore my glory. Father, walk, oh God, in my foundation. Give me a victorious life. Father, Lord, speak to my foundation. Any willful sin, willful disobedience. Father, Deliver me from it. Deliver me from it. Deliver me from it. Deliver me from it. Help me, O oh God. Save me, O oh God. Lord, help me, O oh God. Lord, save me, O oh God. Save me, O oh God. Lega da ba zinda ya ba. Delege dem brogo dobo. Ligra da ba zinda ya ba. Oh Lord, change my story. Yeba la katayanda ya ba. Delege de bo suta zanda yaba. Lege de brondo ye de bo. Lord, change my story. Cost me, O God, to yourself. Father, help me, O God. Repair my destiny. Repair my destiny. Lord, repair my destiny. Lord, repair my destiny. Father, Lord, you said your thought towards me are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring me to a perfect end. Father, let my perfect end come. Let my perfect end come. Father, let my perfect end come. Whatever break the backbone of witchcraft in my family. Break the backbone of witchcraft in my family. Break the backbone of witchcraft in my family. Father, Lord, let me to achieve. Ole bragadu, shelebo zondo yerebo. In Jesus' name we pray. Beloved, we are going to pray. We are going to talk to the Lord. The only reason we are in this place is because we will pray. I would advise you to listen to me as I say the prayers and you to also repeat them and say them. If you cannot catch the pace, just try and pray them as much as you can. Father, whatever damage has been done to my destiny, I command it to be repaired now. Let it 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 be repaired now. now. The enemy will not convert my destiny to rags. I refuse it in Jesus' name. Father, lay your hands of fire and change my destiny for good. Lay your hands of fire upon my destiny and change it for good. I reject and I renounce every destiny demoting name. Yeah, like that of Jabesh. Lord, I nullify those evil effects in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, I want to thank you for scattering the enemies of my divine destiny. Father, every incantation, every ritual, every witchcraft power against my destiny, let them fall down and die in the name of Jesus. Tonight, as I pray, I render oil and void the influence of destiny swallowers in the name of Jesus. Every household wickedness struggling to rearrange my destiny, fall down and die in the name of Jesus. My destiny is attached to God. Therefore, I decree that I can never fail in the name of Jesus. I refuse to fail in the name of Jesus. I refuse to fail in the name of Jesus. Every demonic programming against my divine destiny, let it be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Brethren, just repeat it and pray. Say, I destroy every record of my destiny in the marine world in the name of Jesus. Every altar mounted against my destiny in the heavenlies be dismantled in the name of Jesus. I reject every satanic alternative to my destiny in the name of Jesus. 
I reject every evil cordon, every evil demonic cordon. You will not cook up my destiny. In the name of Jesus, I destroy every witchcraft cordon, every concussion against my destiny. It shall not stand. In the name of Jesus, every power of demonic witchcraft cordon to manipulate my destiny, release me by fire. In the name of Jesus, whatever my ancestors might have done in the past that is making my destiny not to prosper. Father, enter into my destiny with your blood and begin to wash it clean. Destiny swallow us, vomit my destiny. I recover my stolen vehicle of destiny. In the name of Jesus, every conference of darkness against my destiny, scatter in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord my God, anoint me afresh. Anoint my destiny afresh in the mighty name of Jesus. Failure shall not slaughter my destiny in the name of Jesus. Every power waging war against my destiny, fall down and die. Fall down and die in the name of Jesus. You destiny thief, release me now in the name of Jesus. I overthrow every satanic rearrangement that is programmed against my destiny in the name of Jesus. I have come to Zion. My destiny must change in the name of Jesus. Every power derail my destiny, fall down and die in the name of Jesus. I refuse to miss my destiny in life in the name of Jesus. I refuse to accept satanic substitute for my destiny in the name of Jesus. Anything programmed against my destiny in the evilies, be shaken down, be shaken down in the name of Jesus. Every power, drawing power from the evilies against my destiny, fall down and die in the name of Jesus. Every satanic altar fashioned against my destiny, fall down and die. Beloved, pray, 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 pray. Oh Lord, take away my destiny from the hands of men in the name of Jesus. I revoke every satanic ownership on my destiny in the name of Jesus. Satanic ownership on my destiny, I revoke you in the name of Jesus. Satan, you will not settle down on my destiny. No way. My destiny shall not suffer affliction in the name of Jesus. Every association of the emptiers against my destiny, I scatter you tonight in the name of Jesus. I raise up the altar of continuous prosperity upon my destiny in the name of Jesus. You anchor of failure, keeping my destiny, break now by fire. In the name of Jesus, I set judgment against every evil altar erected against my destiny. In the name of Jesus, I reject every satanic rearrangement of my destiny. In the name of Jesus, every evil power with awareness of my destiny be impotent now. In the name of Jesus, I paralyze you, you destiny polluters. You cannot come near me. In the name of Jesus, Kashalagadu. I repent of my sins, known and unknown, willful and unwilful. Father, have mercy. Lord, wash me with your blood. Wash me with your blood. Every power contending with my divine destiny, let them scatter by fire. In the name of Jesus, I refuse to operate below my God-given destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, change my destiny to the best form that you have for me. Make my enemies to be dumbfounded. In the name of Jesus, I resist and I rebuke every effort to change my destiny for good, for, for evil. In the name of Jesus, I remove from, from my body every demonic robe that has been used to derobe me of my destiny. In the name of Jesus, I command every power of darkness assigned to my destiny, die by fire. Beloved, pray, die by fire, die by fire, die by fire. The design of the enemy against my destiny shall be destroyed. In the name of Jesus, the desire of the enemy on my destiny, Lord, open my eyes to see my destiny. Open my eyes to see my destiny. Open my eyes to see my correct destiny. The destiny of my enemy shall not be my Lord. Oh, those who exchange my destiny in the marine kingdom, I take it back for good. I take it back for good. Those who exchange my destiny in the, in the, in the coven, I go and I take back my original destiny. I begin to manifest my God-given destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. I derobe my enemies in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, give me new eyes to see my destiny in the name of Jesus. Give me new eyes to see my destiny. Hear me, my destiny, wake up, wake up. My destiny, wake up. Wherever Satan has kept you, come on, wake up by fire. Wake up by fire. 
wake up by fire. Every conspiracy of darkness against you shall not stand. In the name of Jesus, my destiny, hear the word of the Lord. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. No weapon fashioned against my destiny shall prosper. My destiny shall not be buried. My destiny shall not, I shall not, I shall not serve my younger. I shall not sell my birthright. In the name of Jesus, every strong man that is attached to my destiny, I bind you. In the name of Jesus, every program of failure fashioned against my destiny, die by fire. In the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you. King of glory, I worship you. I am that I am, I give you praise. I thank you because every foothold of the enemy in my destiny is overthrown now. In the name of Jesus, Father, arise. Lord, arise. Sit over my life. Sit over my destiny. Change my destiny for good. In the name of Jesus. Do not silence the mouth of the enemy over my destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, ancient of days. Thank you, King of glory. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Beloved, if you are here and you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, the first thing I want you to know is this, that you cannot have authority to collect your destiny or receive restoration of your destiny from the hand of Satan. There is no way. It is only when you are born again to say, oh, I want to claim back my destiny. There's this proverb that the Yoruba says that it's only when a child comes of age that he will be able to ask what killed his father. So if you are not born again, you have not come of age, you cannot stand on equal footing with the enemy. You cannot stand on equal footing with the enemy. So if you are still living double standard lives, you cannot, you cannot be on equal footing with the enemy. So, child of God, I want you to tonight talk to God. Say, Lord, I don't have any power of my own. I sincerely don't know what I am doing that may have landed me in this level. But, Lord, I want you to help me. As I have prayed, as I have made boast tonight, I want you to help me. Lord, help me, O oh God. Lord, help me. Tell the Lord, say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me, help my story, help my destiny. Talk to the Lord, talk to the Lord. See, I promise to serve you. I promise to serve you. Lord, I give you my life. I give you my soul. I live for you. My life. Every breath that I take. Every moment I wait, Lord, have your way in me. You are worthy, you are glorious, you are beautiful, you are beautiful, you are worthy, Lord, you are glorious, I know what be your name, I know what be. Your name, I know what be your name. Begin 
to thank God for recovery. Hello, what be? Lord of Majesty, Divine Authority, Hello, what be? Your name. Oh, Lord Rumi. Oh, Lord Rumi. Begin to talk to the Lord in the way you understand, in your own way. Lord, put a word in the mouth of your daughter to redirect my step. Put a word to change my life for good. A word in season. A word in season. Talk to the Lord now. The Lord, I receive a word in season. I receive a word in season. I receive a word in season. Lord, a word in season. Father, give me a word in season. Speak to my soul. Speak to my heart. Speak to my spirit. Tell the Lord, as you begin to drop your, your seed, your offerings, your destiny restoration seed, 